Hey you guys, it's me Kiana and I actually planned on not doing another video because I got a lot of things to do today despite what I actually have on. It's almost noon and I need to get dressed because I have a lot to do today. I also wanted to get done um, a lot of prepping um, of my veggies and things like that so I can have them on hand also making the homemade salsa and all that kind of stuff. But before I do so, I wanted to actually come to you guys because many of you actually don't know. Um, and also my girl and I, Butterfly Kisses, in the previous video, the one about Hustling 101, uh, make sure you check out that video because it is imperative if you're trying to open a business, trying to have a side income to look at that video because it will enlighten you to a lot of things and also birth some ideas inside of you that will assist you with uh, the process. Um, but I wanted to come to you guys and tell you that, um, in case you don't know, Don Cornelius from Soul Train actually committed suicide. And they're saying that it was a self-inflicted um, gunshot wound to the head. And I wanted to come to you guys because you know I have um, a little bit of um, personal, um, personal issues or history with someone that committed suicide and as you all know in case you don't know for my new viewers um, Nene's father which is my daughter's father um, he committed suicide about seven years ago um, I was married at the time not to Chuck to my first husband and I was married and he came to me after four years of marriage at that point and asked me um, to go back with him and he was suffering from, you know, a lot of issues. Um, and what happened was I turned him down. It was on my birthday. I still remember vividly. Um, I had a blue minivan. I remember sitting in the front seat and seeing him walk down the steps of his home because he told me to come pick up, you know, my birthday presents. And we were still, you know, kind of cool. Um, so I was like, you know, okay. And I seen him walking down the steps and my mouth literally dropped because I remember seeing him walk down the steps with this humongous balloon and it said, I love you. And I literally, my heart stopped because I was like, I thought by us not being together all of these years at that point, four years and me marrying someone else, someone else raising his child, I was totally shocked. And I knew then that this visit was a supposed to be a romantic visit for him as far as to let me know that he still cared and still loved me. And um, when I saw the balloon, I, I, I still remember, I, I tried not to hurt his feelings. Um, when I say I rejected him, I didn't actually say out my mouth, I don't want you. What I did was I didn't address I didn't address the, you know, the big card and the big balloon at all. I just said thank you and, you know, went on talking about my daycare center because I was built, at that point, it was going from a home daycare to an actual center, so I was really excited about that. And if you look at the video that I did, I did like a three-part video a long time ago. This was about almost a year ago, and I opened up to you guys about this because it was something that I actually battled for a long, long, long time, you guys. And... I thank God for healing and restoring our hearts um, and our minds and our spirits because he definitely did that for me because I battled for a long time the fact that I believed I killed him in a sense because he killed himself literally days after I rejected him and he was at a vulnerable state and I knew that um, that's probably one of the reasons why I went ahead and told him that I would go ahead and you know come down there and get my birthday present and that's one of the reasons why I didn't address like to verbally say I don't want you or you know I, I'm, I'm not trying to go there with you and I knew that he was at a vulnerable state and that's why I tried to be mindful of it and I didn't address it but it was clear that I was not accepting towards it um, and I'm saying all that to say is I have battled the other side of suicide meaning who you leave behind because I in fact was one of those ones whose life was affected forever not only my daughter has to be affected forever but I have to be affected forever as well and I actually carried a lot more than just guilt I actually carried battling um, if in fact I was going to tell my daughter I actually didn't 
never actually say it to her um, until probably about three years ago that I told her that he actually committed suicide. Other than that, all the other times, the other four years, it was said that he drowned. And I don't know if people know or want to recognize it, but in the black community, we try not to, because we can't fathom, we can't wrap our minds around um, us killing ourselves. It sounds silly, but we are like that. Just like we have a stigma attached to going to psychiatrists and stuff in our community. Um, so, you know, in his family, they still say that he drowned. In this family, no one has ever still said that he killed himself. Um, despite information, you know, letter or whatever I found after going in his room after burying him. And they were not financially able to actually give him a great burial at the time I was making good money on my daycare so I actually helped bury him and um, I will actually be going um, in the next I say a couple of months to see his grave for the first time because after uh, after we actually lowered him on the ground I never went back to this day um, to his grave site and I do want to go back so I probably will be taking you guys with me not to the actual grave site you see me at the grave but probably on the way there and things like that, you'll be able to see, um, you know, and hear what I'm going through, what I'm feeling at the moment. Um, but, yeah, so they never actually, to this day, never, not once, have said that he's killed himself. Um, and we just, we meaning in our, in our community, in my community, we usually um, try to say things like, oh, they would never do this. Or they had so much to live for, so I know that didn't happen. There had to have been some foul play. That's what we want to believe. But the reality is it happens. It happens quite often. And Don Cornelius, you guys, was 75 years old. 75 years old. We really, really sit and digest that. Some of us are, are if you're around my age, you're around 35 or so, or 40 years old. Um, when we think that we have 30 more years on this earth, 35 more years and then to go through all that you've been through all that you've been through in life then to end it that way you really had to be at a huge amount of despair thank you baby thank you you really had to be at thank you baby you really have to be at a huge amount of despair you really have to be at a place where you're so deep in depression I mean not just being down not because you can't get something you have to be at a really 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 deep just sit and think about it for a minute just sit and ponder it you have to be at a really really deep place and I looked it up and I saw that he had recently went through a divorce and, you know, my mind says well, maybe he, you know, we see Lifetime movies and stuff and we think about, well, maybe the person found out they had terminal cancer and they just wanted to go ahead and end their life. Or, you know, maybe he found out he had some kind of disease. He knew it was inevitable because of his age and also the disease that he was going to, you know, battle his life, his last days horribly in a lot of pain. Um, and also the fact that he lost his wife on top of that, which he already probably was in. A very low place from that but to and, and maybe that's what his reasoning was whether it's right or wrong whether we would do it or not you know sometimes we, we sit and think about what people's reasoning you know is and but to think about a man that even if he's not extremely or overly rich but he lives comfortably and he has such a legacy and to end your last days of 75 years on this earth going through the things that you've gone through and overcame them going through times that it was you know racial issues I'm talking about extremely huge racial issues way more than what we see now because he grew up in that era to go through making it 
as a black man in that era to go through all the personal things that we don't even know that he went through and to end it that way to end it that way and we're not even talking about the spiritual aspect because if we talk about the spiritual aspect and him being 75 and whether he was a believer or not whether he followed the Christian faith or not we all know what it says about suicide and to end it like that it just saddens my spirit because to see anyone be that low of a place mentally spiritually to see anyone be at that low of a place that they say that death would be better than to endure it's very very sad and I wanted to fill you guys in that do not know did not know and didn't even know any details but as far as we know right now Don Cornelius is no more and he was 75 and it was a self-inflicted gunshot wound now of course they're wording it because they have to do all of their reports and stuff they're saying that it appears to be suicide um, but we all know you know for them to also say things like self-inflicted gunshot wound and all that kind of stuff they had to have some kind of idea and of course the CSI agents and all that kind of stuff they can see once they examine not just the body but the you know the home and the gun and gun residue and all of the finalities that they do um, for them to come to that conclusion you know it, it's quite evident to them so um, I just ask you guys to pray for him pray for his family because there is people that are left that are going to battle this trust and believe me I can tell you as sure as I'm sitting here in front of this camera that his wife his ex-wife um, recently ex-wife will battle this for all of her years all of her years um, if she's anywhere near his age which I'm pretty sure she's not because quite often they marry younger women um, not totally young but younger than him so I'm pretty sure his wife wasn't 75 years old like he was but she has all of the years that she's left on this earth to have to have good days and bad days about this and suicide actually affects more than just a person that is killing themselves um, they no longer feel anymore but the people that are left behind feel every single thing and they feel it and relive it every day in one way shape or form trust me God heals and restores but we never forget and so I just ask you guys to stand in agreement with me and pray for his family pray for anyone that is contemplating um, suicide and also more importantly and above all pray for his spirit and his soul and um, take a moment to um, think about you know whatever bad that you're going through trust and believe me it can't be that bad and there's also a way out and his name is Jesus turn and give it to him good times and in bad and trust me just as I'm sitting here in front of you he will pull you through that's what he does and he does it well so on that note you guys I love you all so much Talk to you guys later and be blessed.